Hi, welcome. In this video, we're told that the dairy store, right, here's our dairy store problem with our cheese, says it takes 50 pounds of milk to make 5 pounds of cheddar cheese. A lot of milk, right, condenses down to only 5 pounds of cheese. And we want to start by making a rate table showing the amount of milk needed to make 5, 10, 15, 20, and 50 pounds of cheddar cheese. And they put a dot, dot, dot here because they want us to make an inference and skip ahead instead of writing every step, but to realize what's happening. So let's start with the rate table. So a rate table uh, generally breaks down the two components, two or more components, to a ratio on a list. And that means that in this case we have milk and cheese, right? So milk in one column, the first component, and cheese, right, in the other. And what we're told is that in the milk column here, right, if we take 50 pounds of milk, we get 5 pounds of cheese. And we want to make a table that, that explores the amount of, amount of milk needed to make 5, which we've taken care of, pounds of cheese, and 10, 15, 20, and then 50 pounds. So what's going to happen in a rate table here? Well, here we have 5 pounds of cheese. To make 10 pounds of cheese, Right, to double the amount of cheese, I need twice the milk. So I need 100 pounds of milk. And this goes with the harder ratios, right? If I add 5 here, I can't just add 5 pounds of milk. I have to add another group of the 50 pounds of milk. So to add 50 pounds of milk. So you're really trying to analyze the way these ratios are growing in both parts. And for 15, the same idea. I'll add another 5 to get 15. But here I'll add another 50 pounds of milk, right? So I need 150 pounds of mil milk to make f um, 15 pounds of cheese. And then last, right, if I add another 5 here, then I'll get 20 pounds of cheese. And I'll need, of course, another 50 pounds of milk. That's 200 pounds of milk. Now how can we jump ahead, right, for 50 pounds of cheese? Well, what I notice, right, is that here, when I doubled 5, right, I, I, that means I took 5, I multiplied it by 2. I can also think of 50 being multiplied by 2 to get 100. When I took 5 and multiplied it right by 3, or added 2 more groups of 5 there, 3 groups of 5 in total, I could have also tripled right, 50 to make 150, and I could have quadrupled both 5 and 50 to make 20 and 200. In other words, I ought to do here to find any amount of cheese is find out how many times 5 goes into that amount, right? Because here, 5 times 10 makes 50. So therefore, I would need 50 times 10, or 500 pounds of cheese. All I'm doing there is scaling my ratio, right? From 50 to 5, and then multiplying both parts by 10, and I get 500 to 50. So here, that's, that's a nice quick way of jumping around on the ratio table. Next, they want us to make a coordinate graph showing the relationship between pounds of milk and pounds of cheddar cheese. And then, of course, first decide which variable should go on each axis. So I think, first of all, we can say that before we get to the details of this graph, that it probably makes the most sense, right, to have cheese on the, the y-axis and x be the milk because of course the amount of milk you use is how you make the cheese right this is x is the independent variable and y is the dependent variable right we're not using cheese to make milk we're going the opposite way we're choosing independent we're choosing some type of milk and that will allow us to make some type of cheese right so that's that's a nice way of setting up our axes so let's set up a graph here and talk about how we can graph a proportional, right, a proportional relationship. So let me switch to the graph. Okay, and here it is. All right. So what do we know? Well, just to go back again, we know that if we have 50 pounds of cheese, of milk, excuse me, that will allow us to make five pounds of cheese. So here on the x-axis, Right? and the y-axis, we start to develop this relationship between milk and cheese. And I'll use the original ratio that they gave us to understand what's happening, where we have 50 pounds of milk and 5 pounds of cheese. 
and we're setting up the scale here, it's okay to go up, let's say, every other dash by 100 for the milk, and up 5, right, up, or 10, let's say, for the cheese. It's okay to have different increments there. That's, that's pretty normal here. That'd be 200, 300, 400, 500, and so on for the milk. And for the cheese, we have 10 and 20 and 30 and so on. And what we're really doing now is plotting this ratio. And that might be weirder first, but let's just think about it. Because if we have 50 pounds of milk, that could be our x value. And 5 pounds of cheese, that could be our y value. And we can make a coordinate from a ratio. So there's our first point, 50 and 5, right here. And what happens is, if we double this, we said, going back to our ratio table, that we have 100 pounds of milk would allow us to make 10 pounds of cheese. And there's a new point, a new x and a y. So first we have this point over here, that was 50, right, and 5. And now when we have 100 pounds of, of milk, right, 100 pounds of milk, we get 10 pounds of cheese, and that gives us our next point, 100 and 10. And we can keep going, because what's going to happen, what you'll start to see with 150, and there's 150 pounds of milk, gives us 15 pounds of cheese, this goes up at a steady rate. And that makes sense. A steady rate, by definition, is a proportion. And we'll actually always plot to a nice line. I'll try to get this to work. That's pretty good. But it should go through the through zero here. Try and not mess that up. There we go. So the idea is that a proportional relationship can be graphed by looking at the rate. And drawing out a rate table not only allows you to predict right, how many pounds of milk will make how many pounds of cheese, but also predict any point on the line. And in part C, they ask us to write an equation. All we're doing then is writing the equation for a line, right? The line that goes through zero. So how do we find the equation to this line? Well. There are many ways to do it. You can look at the slope and the y-intercept. Um, that's one way to approach it, and we'll get to that in a moment. But we can also just say that, hey, all right, we need a lot of milk to make a little amount of cheese. In other words, if I take some amount of milk x, right, it reduces down to some smaller amount of cheese. And in fact, they all, right, in all of the points we picked of all the ratio table setups, there's always 10 times less cheese than there is milk. Right? Because if you think about 50 divided by 10, that gives us 5. Right? At any point here, 100 pounds of milk divided by 10 gives you 10 pounds of cheese. So as an equation, if y is the amount of cheese, right? that's our y-axis, the y value, then to get that amount of cheese, we take some amount of milk, x, and divide it by 10. And that's it. And you might actually see this written in other ways, like let's say, x over 10 equals y, or y equals 1 tenth of x. They're all saying the same thing. Take milk, right, some amount of milk, divide it by 10, and that'll tell you how much cheese you can get. Also, you can use the, the slope-intercept form here. Uh, for example, you could pick two points, right, let's say these two points, and you can find the slope. Subtract the y values, that's 10 and 5. So 10 minus 5 is 5. That means delta y, the difference in y values, is 5. And then slope is also uh, calculating x change here. So the x, right, the x values are 100 minus 50. And that means, well, that's equal to 50. So that means delta x, the difference in x values, is 50. The slope of a line, how steep it is, is always delta y over delta x. In other words, how much your y values are changing compared to your x values and we divide delta y by delta x, That's so slope is 5 over 50, which is 1 over 10, or divide by 10. The y-intercept, well, it's 0, because when there's no milk, there's no cheese. That's our point zero zero. And right, the slope of the slope intercept form of a line is y equals mx plus b. So our line would be what? Well, m is 1 over 10, so 1 over 10 times x plus b, b is our y-intercept, and that's just 0. So we get the same equation that way as well. So there are many different approaches for it. All right, hope this helped.